today we are going to extend our data wave example and enable M unit test for your data wave flow. So first to start with, we will enable M unit on the project. To do that, you right click on the project, go into M unit and you add M unit Maven support. After that, you will see the console will load additional M unit libraries. And then once everything is loaded, if you go into your POM XML, and you can do that to validate that everything is fine, you will see additional properties M unit version, which is 1.3, the latest M unit support version 3A2. It's always below the actual version that you are running. I'm not sure why, but just stick to it. Now, if you scroll down to plugins, you will see that you have additional test resources section edit, which now will see MUnit as a source package, as well as MUnit Maven plugin, which was added to plugin section. So all of this will allow you to execute your unit tests. Save. So what I've done here now is I edit additional API, which is called shipments. So now we have post shipments and we can create shipments. First, you can just start adding your components here into the flow. But in general, that's not a great idea because when APIs change and you regenerate them, by the way, to regenerate, you right click the RAML and say mule generate flows. It will regenerate the content. Usually it doesn't delete any of your custom code, but just in case uh, you should keep your logic for the actual creation of shipments in a separate flow. And this is especially handy when you start building unit tests. So for M unit tests, try to keep everything modular, smaller flows and subflows, because it will be much easier to test them. So for this example, we will create another configuration file and we are go going to call it create shipments. Create shipments appears. And now for this create shipments, we will add data weave. So this creates a flow automatically, as you know, the product of data weave is actually a stream. So if we want to, to print it on the screen in the logger when we're testing it, we need to actually convert the stream to a string and only then we can print it. So to convert, I usually use object to string converter or transformer. So that will take care of conversion to a string so we can see a nice printed JSON and then we'll log it. In the logger, let's put shipment result and our payload. Save. Good. Now as part of the API, we will add the reference to that flow here. Assuming all the logic will live in that other flow in create shipments XML, we will reference it from this API definition instead of putting all that code into the actual definition here. So referencing is easy. We say create shipments flow. And that's it, we're safe. All right, so now when post method will be called on shipments, it will call our create shipments flow, which is in yet another file and that will execute data we've converted to a string and log the message. Okay, now we're ready to create M unit for it. And that's the beauty of separating everything into modular flows and subflows and even XML files. You can right click the file and say new M unit test. And here you can actually specify that you want this particular flow to be used as a base for your M unit. 
we click finish and that's it a unit test was created we look in the XML and you see that M unit was configured and M unit imports create shipments XML file which is here so during the execution of this M unit test it will only import this one XML and it will load that XML and make everything inside of that XML file available during the M unit execution so that's why here in the actual M unit test, as you see, we we have a flow reference to the actual flow. So when M unit runs, it will invoke that flow create shipments flow. So our goal is to be able to feed it some input and make sure that that flow using its data weave will produce the correct output. And that's the point of our M unit test. To make this task more interesting and challenging, our transformation message will be responsible for creating a summary. So here is the input that we will receive. That's the input. These are the shipments. Every shipment record, as you see here, has its vendor. So it's in my case, it's either UPS or FedEx. UPS or FedEx, right? Each record has a product value and some kind of a from shipment address, which is not important for this example. So the goal of our data weave would be to group this information by vendor. So we will see two UPS records, two FedEx records, and then do a sum of all product values. So if you look at UPS, product value 50, product value 100. So this will create one summary record with total of 150. And same idea for FedEx 10, 20, summary 30. So ideally what we want to see as a result is this, which vendor and what was the total for all the shipments. So let's go back to our create shipments flow. Click on the transform message. And look at our input. Right, so this is the input. We need to group this input by vendor ID. So let's do that. We say payload group by as you see it comes up as a pop-up and then we use dollar sign to reference value within this payload and what's important is vendor id map and our output is actually json so what we are saying here is group our four records by vendor id which will create an object with two arrays in it one array for fedex one array for ups and we will map it which means we will iterate over those two arrays first we need to produce a total which is very easy with the help of sum operator and we're saying sum everything with product value so it will take ups array and it will create a sum of all the product value values inside of that array which will be two values 150 and this is what i'm looking at product value 50 ups product value 100 ups so the result will be 150 now we also need to print vendor id and here it's a little bit tricky because we have an array of vendor ids if we just put vendor id it will output the array so let's test this out we'll say vendor id vendor id Okay, so this is ready for testing. 
let's go back to our unit test let me switch to message flow view now what I'm gonna do here is use set message to set input message and this is very important basically it becomes the whole purpose of this M unit test you give it a fake input execute your flow with the data with script you get your output this is how you test without running the actual application makes things go a lot faster the development will go a lot faster so our message needs to correspond to an actual real message that we will receive here's our real message we will take this entire message and unfortunately set message doesn't allow you to just paste it here it doesn't go in so I use this JSON formatter from curiousconcept.com I paste the content I say compact process and this creates a compact view of this JSON which is a single line I copy here the link to this website will be provided in the video details so now with this JSON as one string I can paste it no issues we can set mime type to JSON perfect save so now we have set message which passes in this whole array of four items if we look at XML you will see that M unit set has a long string value of that JSON and the second step of it is to call create shipments flow now it's time to test to test you can simply right click and say run M unit test it will ask you to save any unsaved files and do the run and as you see on the left side you'll see right away if it's a success or failure if it's red right now it's all good it's green let's go take a look at it and as I mentioned before vendor is an array and we have two records so if you specify give me vendor ID since it's an array because we had two items even though the values of that array are identical there is still appear here as array but total is fine some did a good job because some works on an array which is exactly what we need give us the total sum of all items in that array now we need to reduce this vendor ID to be able to give us only distinct value and to do that we have a nice distinct by utility which allows us to give us a distinct item by dollar sign in this case means its value so it will take UPS and will give us UPS so let's go back to unit test run a unit Uh, note one thing after it successfully executes a unit it continues executing the entire project right from M unit test and obviously many things will be missing and I'm not sure why it keeps executing after finishing up with M unit test but it's a common issue you will see it uh, no matter which version of runtime you're using but try to ignore it so our goal is to find what's going on here now we have some improvement distinct by did actually create an array of one item with only distinct items but it's still an array and we want it to be uh, a field so there is a trick that we can use in data weave and that trick is called reduce and we can say reduce the values of that array based on the actual values in that array and I know it's a little confusing but bear with me we save we run our M unit test and here you go so that reduce based on value and that strange syntax allowed us to reduce that array into just one value since it's only one value that's it.